In all my years testing smartwatches, I've landed on a few favorites. There was a time when Fitbit's Versa claimed the ownership of my wrist, and for a spell, the Wear OS based Scoggin Falser was my go to. But lately, I found myself returning to Samsung's Galaxy Watch Active. Over the years, Samsung has refined its smartwatch into a stylish, comfortable, and capable wearable. And Tizen OS tends to be more responsive, proactive, and useful than the software on most other watches. With the Galaxy Watch Active 2, Samsung continues to improve its health and workout monitoring tools as it explores other applications like translations and video playback. Most intriguing of all, to those familiar with Samsung's watch lineup anyway, the Watch Active 2 brings back the company's hallmark spinning bezel. Sort of. When Samsung introduced the Galaxy Watch Active without the rotating wheel, I have to admit, I was shook. I really liked how the bezel made it easier to navigate the interface. But Samsung had to keep the Watch Active series simple and the wheel added to the weight and cost. The company found a compromise with the Watch Active 2 by making the bezel around the screen touch sensitive, so you can scroll through widgets and notifications by dragging your finger around the interface. There's also satisfying haptic feedback here that mimics the feel of it clicking into place. But while I use the physical bezel to interact with previous Galaxy watches more than half the time, I barely use the virtual one at all. And when I did, it was more for the novelty factor and to feel the haptic response than to get any improvement in speed. Eventually, I just rearranged my widgets so the ones that I used most frequently were within two or three swipes from the home screen. This is by no means a ding on Samsung. It just means that Tizen's OS has become easy enough to use that I don't feel the need to zip through endless pages of apps to find the one I want. It's also possible I find it easier to navigate the Watch Active 2 because of its slightly bigger screen. The original Watch Active's 1.1mm screen felt cramped. And though the 40mm Active 2's 1.2mm screen is just a teeny bit larger, it feels a lot roomier. The new Active also comes in a 44mm model with a 1.4mm display, which is even more spacious. Samsung also tweaked the button on the top right of the watch, making it a little bigger with a textured outline so it's altogether easier to press. This lets you jump back a page or, when long pressed, brings up a shortcut you can define. By default, that launches Samsung Pay, although I prefer to put music controls here. The smaller, more recessed button below takes you to the home page or turns the device off. The new back button didn't make a huge difference in my experience with the watch actives. If anything, it was a little too easy to accidentally hit and would pause my workouts when I bent my wrist back a little too much, say when I was getting into a backbend or handstand in yoga. What felt like a more meaningful improvement were the upgraded sensors. Samsung used twice as many LEDs in the Active 2's heart rate sensor, making it faster at reading your pulse. It also has an accelerometer that's twice as sensitive as before. Now, I can tell you exactly how much more precise these sensors are, but I did notice a speed improvement. It was not only quicker, but also more accurate at recognizing when I've stood up from my desk and taken a stroll, promptly congratulating me when I've done so. The Active 2 was also better at automatically detecting when I've embarked on a brisk walk than any other watch I've tested, showing a screen that tracks my pace and distance traveled once I had been walking longer than 10 minutes. I like how proactive Tizen is at encouraging you to move more and automatically charting your activity. I do wish its workout tracking tools were a bit more sophisticated though. When I started a yoga session, for instance, all it did was measure the duration and my pulse throughout the class. Competitors like Garmin are starting to log things like respiration and stress levels for similar activities. Samsung is catching up a little by adding a pacing coach that will tell you to either speed up or slow down as you're running to hit your stride or time goals. But what the likes of Garmin, Fitbit, and even Wear OS lack are the breadth of tools offered by Tizen. It packs a robust selection of health-centric features like stress detection, calorie tracking, and sleep monitoring, but also enables things like smart home control, ride hailing, music playback, and messaging. It even lets you turn your watch into a controller for your PowerPoint presentations, if you want. Samsung continues to expand what Tizen can do. 
One of the small but actually useful tweaks the company made is improving the login experience for the Spotify app. Just sign into your Samsung account, and when you open the music app on your watch, it's ready for use. You won't have to enter passwords all over again. I was surprised at how seamlessly this worked. All I did was sign into my Samsung account at the start of the Active2 setup process. I wish this would spread to all other apps on Tizen. The company also made apps to improve the experience for YouTube and Twitter on the watch, called Watch Viewer for YouTube and Watch Viewer for Twitter, respectively. I wasn't able to find these on my Watch Active 2, and I wish they had come pre-installed. I do think it's a bit silly to try to watch a video on your wrist, but hey, maybe it's helpful for people who simply can't wait to watch that trailer that just dropped. Frankly, I can't find a solid use case for this feature, especially when it seems like it'll drain the watch's battery, but hey, at least it works. Another new tool that I found underwhelming is the My Style watch face. It generates a bunch of wallpapers for your home screen based on the pictures you take. Say you're wearing a pastel green outfit and want a watch face that matches your look. You can snap a selfie and select a section of your shirt. The app then generates about six geometric patterns in the color that you pick and you can set them as your background. The thing is, I didn't like any of the patterns and often the colors in the picture were a few shades darker than they were in real life. The good news is, you can choose any other watch face that suits your taste and ignore my style altogether, and it won't ruin your experience with the Active 2. The watch is a capable device that was speedy during my testing and generally lasted about a day before needing a charge. I was expecting a little bit more though, honestly. Pretty much every non Wear OS smartwatch clocks at least two days of battery life, if not longer. That's my biggest gripe about the Watch Active 2, which is otherwise a well-rounded smartwatch. At $280, it's cheaper than most Wear OS watches and Garmin's new Venue series, but it costs more than the Fitbit Versa 2. Samsung's watch does a lot more than the Versa 2 though, and doesn't have the connectivity issues that plague Fitbit's devices. If you're looking for a smartwatch that will keep you motivated to stay healthy, as well as serve as a reliable companion to your phone, the Watch Active 2 is a solid choice. For more reviews of the latest smartwatches and phones and tablets and laptops, subscribe to Engadget and thank you for watching.